Vince McMahon has a history of doing or making people do the craziest things and getting away with it. However, it all seems to be catching up with him recently, prompting the question of how many instances he has crossed the lines without being checked. Stick around to get an answer to that question as we take you through the most disturbing instances of the former WGWE CEO going too far. No better place to start off these footage than a number of interactions between McMahon and Sable. Hearing the name Rena Marlett Lesnar means many things to different people. To some, Rena is an actress. To others, she is the former WWE wrestler known as Sable. And to some other people, she is a renowned sex symbol and multiple-time Playboy model. Oh, and if you ask former WWE Universal Champion Brock Lesnar, Rena Marlett is his wife. But somehow, Vince McMahon managed to make her a sex tool for quite a while. Working as Sable, Rena became well known in the wrestling world during the Attitude Era, thanks to her numerous feuds with Luna Vachon and Jacqueline, as well as her becoming only the second ever WJWF Women's Champion in the 90s. During her time in the company from 1996 to 1999, Sable's persona was that of a witty contemporary feminist icon, making her type of woman rare in that era of pro wrestling. However, in 1999, she left the WWE and filed a lawsuit worth $110 million against the company, citing allegations of sexual harassment and unsafe working conditions. According to her, McMahon had forced her to show more skin than she wanted to and made her engage in overly sexual scenes with other stars. The case would later get dropped, and Reina began working as a model for Playboy, being on the cover for one of the magazine's highest-selling issues in history, and then in 2003 she returned to the WWE. She was married to a fellow company employee, Mark Mero, at the time, and ordinarily that would mean the company let her play a less sexual character. Boy, were we wrong. Upon her return, McMahon cast her as his mistress, meaning there were multiple backstage appearances in which the two spoke and acted sexually. People might have been naive in the 90s, but it was pretty clear McMahon was hell-bent on selling Rena as a sex symbol more than anything else. Sable was portrayed as a villainess and made to participate in the most possibly revealing events, like the bikini contests. She also had an angle in which Vince made her Stephanie McMahon's personal assistant, sparking a feud between the two. The feud in question had many brawls, most notably one parking lot fight, in which Stephanie ripped Sable's bra off and her breasts were left bare on live TV. And remember, she was married all this time. Worst of all these demeaning interactions of a married woman was the time when the two made out quite heavily in the ring on live TV. That was not something anyone needed to see, particularly when both Rena and McMahon were married. It's no surprise, really, that Rena and Mark Merrow were divorced by the next year. But here's the most disturbing part of all this. Years later, in 2022, former wrestler Two Cold Scorpio recounted a story from during Sable's first spell in the WWE. According to Scorpio McMahon, The Undertaker, Ron Simmons, and some other wrestlers were on tour in England, the aforementioned guys were at a bar one evening when Sable walked by, and the next thing Vince McMahon said was, Damn, I'm a fasterisk CK that B asterisk itch. I don't know when, I don't know where. That's not something one should admit to thinking of, even worse, saying it out. Scorpio went on to insinuate that he believes Vince eventually did what he said, and if you think of it, that gives some grounds to Sable's lawsuit a couple of years later. But even if this lawsuit was full of false claims, how about the fact that Vince McMahon's first idea as soon as Sable returned to the promotion was to make her his personal mistress? Coincidence? Definitely not. How far Vince McMahon actually got apart from the repeated on-camera sexual scenes, we can't say. But what we do know is that when Sable left the company for good in 2004, it had a lot to do with her then newly wedded husband, Brock Lesnar, being concerned about the over-sexualization of his wife's persona in the WWE environment. Pretty disturbing that an employer could so consciously take advantage of his employee, right? Well, we hate to break it to you, but it only gets more disturbing from here on out. 
Take this next case involving Vince McMahon and Trish Stratus, for example. First of all, a wrestler of Trish's caliber being on this list just shows how far and without bounds Vince McMahon is willing to go. Despite being in the WWE on a full-time basis for just seven years, this lady is undoubtedly one of the greatest women's superstars of all time in the company. A one-time WWE Hardcore Champion, three-time WWE Babe of the Year, fan voted Diva of the Decade. Trish also holds the record for the longest reign of any women's champion in the 21st century, has held the WWE Women's Champion title for an outstanding 448 day. She really was as good as any female wrestler will ever see, but rather than see her talent and skill, all Vince McMahon had in mind was to make her yet another of his kayfabe lovers. Trish Stratus was less than a year into her time at the company when McMahon insisted on an angle in which she was his girlfriend. He launched this storyline by angrily announcing he was divorcing his wife, Linda, in the middle of the ring. This resulted in Linda McMahon being in a coma-like institutionalized state and needing a wheelchair. Already sounds messed up, yeah? Well, it got worse on an episode of SmackDown in 2001 in which McMahon wheeled Linda onto the stage and then began making out with Trish right in front of her. The scene of the two making out with tongues and all was already weird, solely based on the fact that Trish was new to the company and was about half McMahon's age. But this storyline was going to get even weirder. In the weeks that followed, McMahon publicly abused Trish, having her set up and beaten by Regal and Stephanie McMahon on one episode of Raw. And then, the next week on the show, in the moments leading up to WrestleMania X7, McMahon came into the ring with Stratus as usual, but this time, he went too far. He legitimately had her on all fours in the ring and determined to humiliate her. He asked her to bark like a dog. Bark like a dog, come on, tell me you're sorry. <laughs> After this, he demanded she stripped on live TV, down to only her underwear, all while the young Stratus cried. This whole experience would have been disturbing for anyone to go through without the cameras, so doing it on live TV made it even worse and disturbing. Trish Stratus definitely went on to turn her career around and become a more respectable act in the promotion. But this whole episode of her barking could have been avoided if Vince McMahon had only been a tiny bit more decent. Up next, we have a very similar interaction on live television, this time involving Stacey Keibler, Vince McMahon. Much like Trish Stratus and Sable, Stacey Keibler is a woman known for much more than just her wrestling career. She has worked as a professional cheerleader, competed on Dancing with the Stars, featured on multiple ABC and CBS shows, including How I Met Your Mother, and appeared in mainstream magazines like Maxim. But before all these, Vince McMahon had her play a role that has her featured on this list. Back in 2001, Keebler had just come into the WWE as part of the invasion angle of former WCW employees migrating to the Stamford-based promotion. She was drafted to the SmackDown brand in 2002 and got her introduction in the most controversial of ways. Vince McMahon, being the heel WWE chairman at the time, wanted to hire a personal assistant. And having decided to have the interviews in the ring, Stacy ended up getting hired. But not before she had to do a provocative table dance and seduce McMahon in the ring to get the job. Unsurprisingly, Stacey Keibler also became McMahon's mistress and was frequently shown flirting and making out with him in backstage segments. She was also required to play out many disturbing storylines, including one in which she accused Randy Orton of raping her and another in which she was pregnant. Certain backstage scenes even showed Vince McMahon forcing sexual acts on her, which in all honesty should be as far as it gets. Although the seductive table dance that got Stacy hired has gone on to become a source of many internet memes, the idea behind it is in no way funny. The whole episode is worsened by the fact that the majority of the sexual allegations that have been brought to light against McMahon all have the same background as his kayfabe relationship with Stacy Keibler. The former WWE CEO making sexual demands from women in exchange for employment. 
Moving on, we have a moment that does not directly involve Vince McMahon, at least not on camera. But trust us, going too far doesn't get any more disturbing than the Lita and Edge episode. For most fans, it could be difficult to pinpoint what exact moment we're talking about. That's because Lita and Edge are two of the most sexualized on-camera WWE wrestlers ever. Yeah, they were both successful performers at their peaks, but they also had a lot of sexual interactions on camera over the course of their careers. However, the one that stands out is from 2006, involving both characters. Edge had just become the first person to cash in the money in the bank contract, having defeated and exhausted John Cena at New Year's Revolution. Vince McMahon and his creative writers felt it necessary that Edge celebrated this massive feat on camera, but they really couldn't have come up with a more provocative celebration. Edge and Lita were scripted to have a live sex scene in the ring on the next episode of Raw. At the time, the two wrestlers were dating both on screen and in real life, but as soon as the whole segment was pitched to them, Lita immediately refused. As she'd later reveal, Lita told all the writers and producers present that the idea of her having sex on live TV was something she wasn't comfortable with. But guess what? Rather than respect her wish, McMahon disregarded it and went as far as threatening to fire Lita if she didn't go ahead with it. Upon hearing this, she sought help by reaching out to Edge and John Cena, who were more highly ranked members of the company. The two approached McMahon and his board on separate occasions and asked for the segment to be killed before the live broadcast. And you guessed right, they were both denied. So despite the lack of consent from both of the individuals involved, Vince McMahon got what he wanted. The live sex celebration took place as planned and scheduled, a bed was placed in the middle of the ring with fans present, and the show was publicized live, just like any other Raw night. The couple made out and slowly stripped each other down to their underwear before Edge bent Lita over and took off her bra. The entire arena wasn't sure what they were witnessing, and you could notice the stillness of the air as the two climbed into bed and went underneath the covers. Of course, we didn't see any actual penetration, but we're pretty sure it did happen because at some point the covers came off a bit and Lita's naked breasts were exposed. The segment would later get interrupted by Ric Flair and later John Cena who attacked Edge, but Vince McMahon's extremely vulgar idea had actually been carried out. The episode remains one of the highest TV ratings a Raw segment had ever gotten, just like he wanted. Edge has spoken about the whole experience a couple of times, stating that he hated doing it so much he has blurred the whole interaction out of his brain. It wasn't as simple for Lita though, as she eventually left the company due to even more demeaning storylines, like when the WDWE tag team Crime Time auctioned off articles of her clothing and sex toys and called it a hoe sale. Can you believe that? Yet another disgusting storyline forced on a female act by Vince McMahon. It's quite insane how much this guy's been able to get away with, don't you think? And we're not even done yet, not without mentioning the tales of Vince's Devils. Originally known as the Ladies in Pink, Vince's Devils was a female tag team under the Raw brand back in the mid-2000s. Consisting of Divas Candice Michelle, Tori Wilson and Victoria, the alliance didn't last for up to a year but it was promising while it lasted. At least, that's what Vince McMahon wanted fans to think. In reality, the trifecta of Michelle, Victoria, and Tori Wilson was a way of the WGWE CEO sexualizing newly employed female characters. According to inside reports, when the red lights went off, McMahon had the women, particularly Michelle and Tori Wilson, get into sexual acts with him. They did have a couple of feuds with the likes of Trish Stratus and Ashley Massaro, but they were never really taken seriously as challengers. After the group split in early 2006, McMahon scripted Candice Michelle and Tori Wilson to be in romantic relationships with him at different times. Just like the earlier mentioned cases, both ladies had sexual backstage encounters with McMahon, and it turns out both women would rather those encounters never happened. 
Candice Michelle, who had a backstage scene of Vince McMahon touching her cleavage to try to heal her cold, spoke about the whole experience years after leaving the WWE, saying, I remember it was awkward. I do think there were like two, maybe three. I don't quite remember, to be honest, but also it was how it was back then. I remember it just kind of trickled down from girl to girl. Everybody kind of went through that. Even though it's awkward to do, it was just part of my job. We're young and we're dumb and we're innocent and we're happy to be working. That's just part of it. And for Tori Wilson, it was a much worse experience. From her very first day in the company, she was scripted to kiss McMahon, having never even met the man prior. Speaking about this day, she said, First day backstage, I was so nervous. Vince is an intimidating man, and I'd just met him, so of course he's even more intimidating. To have to kiss someone that you're physically scared of, that's frightening. To make it even more disturbing, Tori Wilson revealed that Linda McMahon was present all through the filming. That's right, Vince's longtime wife was present to see her husband engage in scripted sexual acts on camera, and according to Tori, Linda encouraged her to just go for it. Crazy stuff, really. And there's more. Tori was also demanded to take part in a number of WWE's infamous bikini contests, and the Hall of Famer has revealed that the experience of having to be half-naked on live TV always had her fighting back tears. She did participate in these contests because she believed it was her job, but it eventually got too much for her when Vince McMahon began making more explicit demands. We're talking about him asking her to walk out on stage naked with nothing but paint on her body. Tori stood her ground and refused to do that, but that wasn't the last time Vince McMahon pushed the boundaries with her. Another time was when I did Playboy. Vince wanted me to do a pay-per-view also, the video. That one was very hardcore pressed, and it was really hard for me to say no, but I absolutely didn't want that. On the bright side, Wilson was able to maintain her stand on these occasions, but it doesn't make Vince McMahon making these demands any better. And what if we told you that Vince McMahon disturbingly going too far sometimes doesn't include just women? Yup, even the macho men end up having to play along sometimes. Any doubts? Check out the Kiss My Ass Club. They're probably not a registered association or anything, but this club is as real as any weird thing the WJWE has aired on live TV. Essentially, this club consists of a number of WJWE superstars who have all been subjected to kissing Vince McMahon's bare buttocks over the years. You heard that right. Grown men having to put their lips on the naked butt of another man on live TV. The first member is the current WWE Vice President of Global Talent Development, William Regal. In his decades in the WWE, Regal enjoyed a lot of success, including becoming a two-time Intercontinental Champion, a five-time Hardcore Champion, a four-time European Champion, a four-time World Tag Team Champion, and winning the 2008 edition of the King of the Ring Tournament. So how did he end up being in the Kiss My Ass Club? Well, back in 2001, Regal had been fired from his kayfabe commissioner of the company role by Linda McMahon. As part of the storyline, he pleaded to get his job back, and Vince McMahon agreed, but only on the condition that he kiss his bare ass. And so, on November 19, 2001, during an episode of Raw, William Regal became the first member of the Kiss My Ass Club. Just as it sounds, McMahon pulled his pants down, wiggled his bare buttocks, and made such an iconic wrestler kiss it. Awkward as it was, this was the first of six times we were going to see such humiliation take place. At one point, it seemed to be McMahon's weird way of feeding his illogical egomania, while on other days, he was just looking to humiliate one of his employees. Respected company executive Jim Ross was the next victim, which isn't much of a surprise given Ross has always been bullied by McMahon. Ross's case only happened as punishment for him making fun of McMahon on commentary after the chairman failed to get Steve Austin to kiss his ass. The company let this weird part of the story rest until five years later when another legend wanted his job back. This time, it was former Shawn Michaels' partner in the Rockers, Marty Jannetty, who was required to do it. 
The Heartbreak Kid intervened and saved his former teammate, but ended up becoming the victim instead when Shane McMahon knocked him out and planted his unconscious face on his father's bare ass. Next was Shane McMahon himself, try not to puke, getting his face stuffed in his dad's butt cheeks, followed by Mick Foley, who obliged to this humiliation to save Molina's job. Lastly, and most recently, was midget wrestler Hornswoggle in 2008 as part of his being cast as McMahon's bastard son. Only he went as far as biting down on Vince's butt cheek. This nasty angle might have been deemed comical by some back when it took place, but the truth is, it's just another case of McMahon not respecting anyone's boundaries or plainly having any boundaries for himself, which is something we saw in the Stephanie McMahon incest storyline. There's not too much to be said about this last case, at least if we're not going to get you more irritated than you already are. So Stephanie and Triple H got married back in 2003 after a relationship that started off on screen. The two continued their in-ring personas, and it was all good, until 2005 when the billion dollar princess became pregnant with the couple's first daughter. What every regular man would have taken as a moment of joy and pride to have a grandchild on the way is what McMahon turned into the most disturbing of storyline ideas possible. Stephanie revealed a few years after the incident that her father pitched to her a storyline in which the two announced that her unborn child was a product of her sleeping with her father. What the actual hell? In Stephanie's words, that one was just a little too gross, actually. It's completely disgusting. I don't find the entertainment value in it at all. And he is actually my father, so how could I even play that out? I can't fake kissing my dad like we were in love or something. It's just revolting all the way around. We couldn't agree more, dear Stephanie. It's a mystery what the older McMahon hoped to achieve, but having the idea at all, particularly when the actual father of the child is your employee, man, Vince McMahon really has no limits. Which of these moments do you find the most disturbing? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. And before you leave, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Ring Rivals so you don't miss the next ones.